so today I am sick and tired of this mechanical fan which comes on pretty much every 4.0 it's got a clutch which doesn't spin very fast at all if you're idling and that sucks when you're off-roading and you're just crawling along in low you're gonna run a little warmer than normal and that that's unacceptable plus if you hit water like deep deep water this fan's gonna hit that water and it could potentially like waffle or whatever you want to call it wave in the water because of the hydraulic shock i guess and the blades could actually contact the radiator and if you know anything about being in the middle of nowhere off-roading that's no good so the idea would be to remove this thereby taking the lag off of the main belt as well because it's not turning all this heavy metal mount an electrical fan the problem is the 4.0 does not have a switching coolant temp sensor which is located right here in the thermostat housing it just feeds i want to say the computer and the dash yeah it's got to feed the computer too so that the computer can put it in limp mode if it sees the temperature get too high so since this is controlling the computer, how do you get an electrical fan to work only when the temp is high and then shut off when the temp is low? Ah, apparently, I wanna say Speedway, maybe Quadratech or somewhere, I forget where. $309.99, that's a lot of dang money. But it's an aluminum shroud. <laughs> an electrical fan, some relays, a fuse block, and one of these guys. So this guy can screw into here, and then you'll have a temp sender for the fan and your regular temp switch for the computer and whatnot. I, however, found this on the local marketplace-y. I think I paid a hundred bucks for everything because they didn't have this. And this was 10 bucks on eBay. This is 20 bucks. I bought the 190. Because apparently that's where the strokers are happy is about 190 degrees. So anything above 190, this switch is going to let the fan kick on. I'm also going to put a three-way switch on my dash so I can command the fan on. Whether this switch is on or not. Say for if I'm running the onboard air. And then I'm also going to have the other position on the three position be commanding it to off because I want to be able to kill the fan when I hit deep water and not send the blades into the radiator. Today's goal, obviously, pay no mind to that, is to get this out, get that in, and also do a thermostat because it's about to start getting cold and I would like heat quickly in the winter. So that's what I'm doing today. Here we go. Now, we got the shroud out, we got the fan off. Do not forget to put these nuts back on this pulley here for the water pump. Once you get that fan out of the way, you gotta put these nuts back and make sure they're tight. Run a screwdriver across the bolts if you have to, to uh, hold it steady, but get those nice and tight. They have lock washers built into them. But don't forget to put those back on. That's bad. All right, now we're gonna start putting the stuff back in. And now with it installed and the overflow res back in on the supplied bracket that comes with the kit, we're set up for electric fan. Now we gotta get this guy off. I'm gonna do the thermostat anyway while I'm in there, pull this out, put the plug in and adapter and the new sensor for this guy. Then I'm gonna wire it up to the dash so I can command it on and off. Yeah kit comes with this handy dandy little switcher box that apparently you can tie the AC into so that the AC will also kick the fan on and that's vital. Um, I'm probably going to take advantage of that obviously because I'm using the AC for my onboard air system to air up the tires and whenever that compressor's on it gets pretty hot so I would like for the fan to kick on even if the temperature is still below 190. Uh, anytime I request onboard air, it's going to kick the AC on. That's cool. Now for the switch on the dash, 
this thing has a two wire and what it wants is one of these wires connected to one side of the thermostat switch and one of these wires connected to the other side and then this will tell that when the switch is above 190 or below 190. This green wire is going to connect to the AC clutch so whenever I turn on the onboard air the AC clutch is requested. This is going to get power as well. That will also then click this relay and turn on the fan whether this sees temperature or not. Uh, this is the key on to let it know when to do its job. This is from the battery to send solid power through. This is to go to the fan. I like how they included fuses for both. Here's a secondary fan power as well if you wanted to throw another fuse and run two fans. And then the plan is to have a switch on the dash that in the center position off to stop any of this from working. If I switch it one way, then this will come alive and it will rely on either this switch or the AC switch to come on. Meaning one side of the switch will be the sensed option. The middle will be all off no matter what. And the other end of the switch will be on. And that will just jumper this guy to on at all times. So then I'll have a three position switch on the dash middle will kill the fans if I hit high water left will turn the fans on constant no matter what and right will tell it to be in sensed mode now I just got to wire it so now we have everything wired up the switch will connect these two wires to the control box if the temperature rises above 190 also have a wire tied into the compressor so if i request onboard air with the switch on the dash it will also turn the fan on we'll see how she works like if you like the video subscribe if you want to see more and as always keep on modding